There are so many weird things going on here. Welcome to Ranger Reviews, a web series where we look at episodes of the TV show Power Rangers and then discuss them. Today we're exploring a prequel movie to the next season titled Turbo, a Power Rangers movie. We begin this movie with another damn long scroll of text like the last one. This time it's Zordon's voice talking about how there is a wizard named Larigo who lives on another planet. He is the keeper of a golden key which unlocks the dimensional gateways of the universe. Larigo is hunted by Divatox, a wicked galactic pirate who needs the wizard's power to release a terrible demon-like creature. Her plan is to join this creature in a sinister marriage and bring forth a reign of terror on the galaxy. Larigo's only chance is to seek the help of powerful friends. First, he must leave his planet and find his way to Earth. Smash the title. We see the green planet spinning in space before we find that a creature is getting a crossbow ready to fire. He fires it and we see a freaking Furby running around. These warriors are searching for him, claiming that he must be caught. Also, they're all riding horses around the place. The sequence goes on for what feels like forever before they call after him and we find out that this little hairy troll is actually Largo. The warriors have him surrounded, telling him to surrender to Divatox. Then Largo takes out a crystallized wand and he just teleports away. Dude, why didn't you do that earlier? In a boxing ring, Tommy and Rocky are sparring and being coached. Then Adam is told to go in. Their coach is telling them that Rocky is trying way too hard and he ends up falling down. Meanwhile, on a bus that says Angel Grove's Haven, Kat and Tanya are there and all the kids are singing row, row, row your boat. And there's a kid named Justin who is there who doesn't want to sing. Kat asks if he's okay and he says that he's fine. Then Rocky tries to do a kick and Rocky just flies out of the damn ring, landing hard on his back on the hard floor. The kids plus Tanya and Kat come in and Justin is super concerned about Rocky. Tanya and Kat run up as Rocky is taken away on a stretcher. Okay. Underwater on the alien planet, we see a fish-like submarine and we are introduced to Divatox. She comes in, smacking the crap out of her warriors. She then blames someone named Elgar for losing Larigo. He's actually her nephew. Then Divatox slices his hand off and another monster called Rygog catches it. They then take the piss out on one another when Divatox tells them to just shut up. Divatox has a plan. They're going to take away the one thing Larigo cares the most about in the world. She then takes out her eel pet and she's very affectionate to it. By the way, we're only like eight minutes into this movie. Meanwhile, Larigo lands on Earth in Africa. He showed up, lands in a bird's nest, and somehow he doesn't break anything. Then baby birds peck at his feet and he rolls out of the damn tree before he encounters a freaking lion. And that's when his eyes get wide. <laughs> My god. Then Larigo starts talking to the lion, kind of, purring the word alpha. But then he creates a spark, scaring the lion away. He then walks away repeating Alpha over and over again. In the new and improved power chamber, now complete with color-coded tubes, Alpha walks in telling Zordon about how Larigo, who is apparently from the planet Lyaria, is on Earth. Zordon shows up and he explains that he's already tracking Larigo. Apparently he can't survive on Earth for very long. Alpha begins a worldwide search for the furball. In the hospital, Rocky is asleep and Justin walks in. Then he hears the other rangers coming and for some odd reason, he hides under the bed. Why, is he not supposed to be there? Then they come in with balloons and a card, and they talk about how he's going to make a full recovery, but not in time for the competition. They'll have to figure out something else for the shelter. They also then just talk about how Justin is taking this really hard, and they don't want him to have to lose the shelter after he apparently just lost his mother. Then Tommy's communicator goes off, and Zordon tells the rangers to come to the power chamber right away. Rocky tells them to go, and the four teleport out of there. Much to the shock of Justin. Justin then hits his head on the bed from underneath, crawling out. Rocky is kind of surprised slash pissed that Justin is there, and he asks Justin how much he heard, and Justin says, you guys are the Power Rangers? Seriously, 12 minutes into this film, everyone. At the power chamber, Tanya and Adam will stay there, while Tommy and Kat go take their power boxes to go get Larigo from Africa. Apparently, Larigo is cloaking himself very well, so they have to look on foot because he's clearly in danger. Meanwhile, in Africa, Larigo is still walking around this damn forest. He looks up to the sun, and it's clearly making him weaker. Then monkeys nearby start coming out, probably thinking that they found their brethren. They guide Larigo away, and then he just keeps saying, Alpha. There's a lot of monkey ass in this scene too, by the way. In the submarine, Rygog has found Larigo. Divatox is very excited that they found him, but Elgar says they should just go back to stealing stuff. But then Divatox mentions how she needs to marry the demon creature, Malagor. Then she tells Elgar that he needs to kidnap two humans of purity and strength to offer as her dowry to Malagor. They activate the barrier shields and set a course for Earth. They're leaving Lyaria, coming for Larigo. At a baseball field, Stone is there. As a cop again? What? Then Bulk and Skull are there as cops too. Weren't they detectives? Also, Skull is trying to get mustard out of a bottle to put on a hot dog. Apparently, Stone needs them to meet him somewhere that night, and Skull hits mustard all over his face. Cool. Cat and Tommy are walking through the jungle, and of course, Cat mentions how this reminds her of parts of Australia. Seriously, she has one thing, guys. Then, Tanya says that some object that they've been tracking has entered Earth's atmosphere, but they can't identify it. 
Meanwhile, Bulk and Skull are lost that evening, trying to find where they need to go to get to Stone, and then they see a moving star in the sky that flashes over them. Then they can't break for some reason, and they crash into a fishing bait shop. Overhead is Divatox's ship, and it abducts the two into it. Back in Africa, which is something I never thought I would say on Ranger Reviews, Kat says that she's exhausted from the heat, and Kat gets some water out of Tommy's power pack. Then she sits down to catch her breath a bit. Then Tommy tells her to not move because there's a giant ass snake behind her. At the count of three, she's going to jump away. She jumps away so hard that she flies off the damn cliff. <laughs> Cat. Meanwhile, Tommy is wrestling with some fake ass snake. Then Cat gets out her Zeonizer in one of the coolest scenes ever. She's dangling from a branch, but then the branch breaks and she's flying down through the air. She catches the other part of her Zeonizer that actually fell off as she fell. And then she attempts to morph screaming, Zero Ranger 1, pink. But before she can fully transform, she hits the water. And for some reason, this cancels her morph. That was lame, but okay. Then Tommy just jumps off the cliff to follow her. I mean, that's really stupid. He gets down in the river and he sees Cat floating away, but then he tries to get over to her. This sequence goes on for what feels like a thousand years where Tommy is screaming for Cat as he swims over to her. He finally makes it and they swim ashore as Cat explains that her leg really hurts. Tommy gets out a life vest from her power pack and Cat puts it on, but then as soon as she sits down, the thing is just gone. Okay. In the submarine, Divatox is pissed that they can't find Larigo, but Elgar explains that he at least got two humans, Bulk and Skull. He also scrambled their brains. Divatox demands that they find new humans since these ones smell bad. That's fair, I guess. Meanwhile, Cat is limping with Tommy as they're trying to find Larigo, and they say that his signal is getting very weak. Then they just come around a corner, find Larigo with the monkeys. He then says Alpha over and over again, like, dude, we get it. And Tommy ditches Cat as he comes up to him. We also get a shot of how messed up Cat's leg is. Larigo then comes over to Catherine and he uses his special Furby magic to heal her leg. They're obviously shocked that this dude just did that, but then Larigo almost just passes out. They have to get him out of there. Cat lets Alpha know that they're ready to be teleported and Tommy thanks the monkeys like they're gonna understand him. <laughs> We see a periscope come out of the water and Divatox spots two humans ripe for the picking who are scuba diving their way. We see the scuba divers and suddenly they're ambushed by the warriors. In the submarine, Elgar drops them into the lower area of the submarine, saying that they're perfect. Also, we find out that she has Yara, Larigo's wife, as well as their newborn baby. They're going to use her as a way to force Larigo out. In the power chamber, they're scanning Larigo and Larigo starts panicking. Alpha explains he's getting a telepathic transmission and Alpha connects it to the viewing globe. The rangers meet Yara, the baby, and Divatox for the very first time. Divatox demands that they bring him to her and if they do, she'll train him for the two people that she has kidnapped. Her sensors tell her that they were once Power Rangers. They are Kimberly and Jason. What? This could have had a little bit more weight if Jason wasn't just like the Gold Ranger a second ago, but still. Kim and Jason talk about how they're in major trouble. Kim wishes they can morph and they can't find a way out when Bulk and Skull say hello, but they now have different accents from their brains being scrambled, I guess. Meanwhile, Alpha and Larigo are clicking at each other, apparently speaking. Zoran then explains that Divatox wants Larigo to get to the lost island of Moranthius via the Nemesis Triangle. She'll go to another dimension to unleash Malagor, and when that happens, nothing will be safe. Not even the Zords will be able to stop her. Then Larigo starts chanting a bunch of stuff and Alpha's a little freaked out by this because he realizes this is the Lyarian Prayer of Guidance. Larigo is preparing himself to surrender. Kat says that they can't let him do that, but Adam brings up a good point. It's his family and these nerds would definitely do the same thing for each other. Tommy says that they have to go get Kim and Jason and then they'll get Larigo and his family. They have to trust that they can do this.